Well, hello. Um, on to chapter 22. We're only going to be covering 22.1 for right now. What is a plant? Um, our goal is to re relate the structure of each of the major or plant organs and tissues to the physiological processes of plants, too. But we're going to be doing that goal for quite some time for the next couple or few lessons. So our objectives are to describe what plants need to survive, and describe how the first plants evolved, and also explain the process of alternations of generations. So plants have adapted so well to so many environments that they dominate much of the surface of our planet. And there is strong evidence that all modern plants are descendants of water-dwelling organisms. The appearance of plants on land was a major event in evolution. So our first objective is to describe what plants need to survive. Plants are classified as members of the kingdom Plantea. Plant, plants are eukaryotic that have cell walls containing cellulose and carry out photosynthesis using chlorophyll A and B. All plants have the same basic needs, sunlight, a way to exchange gases with the surrounding air, water, and minerals. Plants use energy from sunlight to carry out photosynthesis. The leaves are typically broad and flat and are arranged on the stem so, that, so as to maximize light absorption. Plants require oxygen to support cellular respiration as well as carbon dioxide to carry out photosynthesis. Plants must exchange these gases with, with the atmosphere and the soil without losing excessive amounts of water through evaporation. Land plants have evolved structures that limit water loss, water loss and speed the uptake of water from the ground. Minerals are nutrients in the soil that, need for, that are needed for plant growth, and many plants have specialized tissues, which we'll learn about later, that carry water and nutrients upward from the soil and distribute the products of photosynthesis throughout the body. So what do plants need to survive? You should know this. Sunlight, gas exchange, water, and minerals. Objective two is to describe how the first plants evolved. The ancestors of today's plants were water-dwelling organisms similar to today's green algae. Although not as large and complex as many plants, green algae have cell walls and photosynthetic pigments that are identical to those of plants. Green algae also have reproductive cycles that are similar to plants too. Studies of the genomes of green algae suggest that they are so closely related to other plants that they should be considered part of the plant kingdom. The greatest challenge that early plants, I oh, sorry, sorry, should I add my own? Just dump that out. The greatest challenge that early land plants faced was obtaining water. They met this challenge by growing close to the ground in damp locations. Fossils suggest the first true plants were dependent on water to complete their life cycles. And one of the earliest fossil vascular plants was Cooksonia, shown here. Several groups of plants evolved from the first land plants. One group developed into mosses. Another lineage great gave rise to the ferns, cone-bearing plants, and then flowering plants. Botanists divide the plant kingdom into five major groups based on four important features, embryo formation, specialized water-conducting tissues, seeds, and flowers. The relationships of plant groups is, is shown here. So objective two is to describe how the first plants evolved. Over time, the demands of life on land for, favored the evolution of plants, more resistance to the drying rays of the sun, more capable of conserving water, and more capable of reproducing without water, too. So, objective three, and this is what you really need to know for this lesson, is explaining the process of alternations of generations. All right. The life cycle of land plants has two alternating phases a diploid or 2N phase, as you can see here with the purple, and a haploid phase, which is the gold color. The shift between the haploid phase and the diploid phase is known as alternations of generations, as you can see in this figure right here. The multicellular diploid phase is, diploid phase is known as a sporophyte of, or spore-producing plant. Okay, they produce spores. The multicellular haploid phase is known as the gametophyte, or gamete-producing plant. Sporophytes produce haploid spores through meiosis. All right. 
one end. They produce haploid spores through meiosis. These spores grow into multicellular structures called gametophytes. Each gametophyte produces reproductive cells called gametes. Okay, sperm and egg cells. During fertilization, a sperm and egg fuse with each other, producing a diploid zygote that develops into a new sporophyte. An important trend in plant evolution is the reduction in size of the gametophyte and the increasing size of the spor sporophyte. All right. <laughs> And that's what you need to know for right now. All right. So our objective three is explain the process of alternations of generations. The life cycle of a land plant has two alternating phases. You go from a diploid phase and a haploid phase. So our objectives for this lesson is describe what plants need to survive, describe how the first plants evolved, and also explain the process of alternations of generations. And yes, they all relate to the goal of each of the major plant organisms and tissues to the physiological processes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to 22.1.